Tales Town! Dance, 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 dance. I have done this on a live video, but I'm going to do it as its own separate video because, again, it was requested by you for me to share some ideas around sleeping patterns. Of course, you can just go ahead and Google these, um, and I'm sure you already have, but maybe you just want me to share them, so I will. As someone who definitely is still developing, honestly, a healthy sleeping pattern and holding onto it, sustaining it, I know I've quoted myself on this before, I'll say it again, not quoted myself, quoted someone else is that what we teach we often need to learn and so me doing this video is self-teaching maybe reminding myself of some things as well of course as sharing with you so first of all we've got to understand why we want healthy sleeping habits and for one the most important thing i want to say is it really is about mental well-being and mental health not having good sleep and i know this is like no duh but really really let's put this in bold italicized underlined you know, font size 2000, that sleep, a good sleep makes for good mental well-being. And obviously it's not the only thing, but it really, really does help. That ability for our mind to rest and relax and process what's happened over the last day really, really is, is paramount to us then going into the next day feeling better and refreshed. I know that, for example, that last night while I went to bed quite late, woke up quite late, I had a really good sleep. I feel fantastic this morning, so I'm ready to go. So... It's, it's vital, it's very, very important. So then the other thing turns to what we do during the day that also gives us this element of wanting to sleep better or of course giving us better rest. Because it can turn into a quite vicious cycle. Certainly what I experienced as well is that we don't sleep well, uh, we feel grumpy waking up, we're generally quite negative during the day, we get to bed feeling like we've not had a great day, we don't sleep well, we wake up the next day, lather, rinse, repeat right? Lather, rinse, repeat. And it can almost get worse and worse and worse because of course our day is also impacted by other stuff that can happen. So stuff can take place that can make us feel even worse, which can impact our sleep even more. The anxiety builds up, etc, etc. You see where I'm going with this. So if we can get our sleep together, then of course we have a much better chance of developing a much more positive mindset, a much more active uh, lifestyle as well, and just generally a better feeling of well-being for ourself. So, how to develop healthy sleeping habits? First of all, if I'm talking to you young people out there, you students, and you're thinking, well, you know, I, I go to bed so late and I wake up at 1pm or 2pm every day and it's just that's it and that's the pattern. Well then, what the first thing I suggest is, is find a pattern of sleep that is one during the darker hours and try and stick yourself to that. Okay, so what I mean is, I mean, obviously we're getting more daylight now, but nonetheless, find a time where you're gonna sleep during the night time. Now, some of you will immediately go, oh, but Dan, I'm a night owl, and oh, Dan, but I'm more awake when it's night time, and all, 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 all. And I know that those are things, right? I know that those are things that are real and people out there can make it a personality trait, but the honest truth is, your sleep actually is, and your mental well-being is of course impacted by how light it is outside, right? We get into a cycle of when the sun goes down, so do we. And this can be proven through studies done on people who work at night um, exclusively, so they do sleep during the day and they don't sleep uh, during the night, etc., etc. Uh, it can really, really have an impact and not necessarily always gonna be a big grave one, but it does have an impact. So that's why I say, first of all, find the hours when it's, light, when it's late and when it's nighttime. All right, that's gonna be key. Now, pick this time area of, right, seven to eight hours as well. And basically, what you're going to do is either you're going to consistently go to bed at that time or consistently wake up at that time, right? And I say either or because we're trying to build a pattern here. We're trying to build a habit. Right now, you're in a pattern of maybe going to sleep at 4 a.m. and waking up at 2 p.m. or, you know, going to sleep when you're tired and waking up whenever you wake up. But the problem with that is it throws your body clock right out of whack, right? So our body actually loves patterns. It loves a formula. It loves repetition. It does love that. And it, it sometimes can be to our ruin because, for example, if we get used to something, this is how addictions kick in, of course. If we get used to, you know, nicotine, then our body's going to struggle when we take that away, right? If we get used to sleeping at 4 a.m., our body's going to struggle when we take that away. It does love the routine. It loves the pattern. So we've got to break a habit in order to develop a new one and that's why I say either or morning or sorry or going to bed or waking up make those consistent times 
And what you're doing is reforming a habit of making sure that you are going to be sleeping at the right time for the right amount of time. All right. And that's really, that's really got to be step one. So set an alarm for, let's say if you're going to bed at, let's say 4 a.m., try and go to bed at midnight and wake up at eight instead of two or one. And at least, yes, you will still feel tired, but that's because you're going to be waking up during a time where you're not used to waking up. So your body's going to be a bit out of whack. It's going to be tired. And again, what's interesting is I've seen people go through this process and they are like, oh, but I've done that and I felt knackered the next day and it's not like it wasn't working. It's like, well, of course not, because your body's not used to go, going to bed and waking up at that time. That's, the, that's why you still feel tired because your body doesn't think it's time to be awake. So it's not going to want to wake up. You have to force your body to understand that now is the time to be asleep and now is the time to be awake. All right, you're telling your body that. So don't let your body dictate to you what, what you should be doing because it's only responding to the behavior that you've given it up until now, right? So it's about relearning that process. The next thing I would say, and I know this is like, <laughs> this is one of those things I do need to learn, all right? So we are learning together on this. I'm aware of this one. Is screens and mobile phones before we go to bed. Um, and actually, this isn't necessarily about so much the the screen itself it's actually more about what your bedroom is for your bedroom really wants to be a place of sleep um and that's really it right sleep that's what your bedroom is designed for now i know some of you will have screens in your room obviously some of you will take your phones to bed with you some of you have your consoles in there your computers etc etc but actually when your room or when a space becomes a place of a certain activity that is not sleep Going into that room is not going to feel like that's the place where you sleep. My partner and I deliberately did not put a screen, a TV screen in our bedroom because we wanted to make sure that the, the tone was set, that that room was for sleeping. It is not for watching TV or anything like that. Now, we've kind of forsaken that rule because we wake up and watch our TV on our laptop now. <laughs> but that's in the morning. That's in the morning. And we try not to do it at bedtime as well. But it's a challenge. But that's something that we need to learn in order to get better sleep is the thing is when you have a screen in your room it's the sounds it makes it's also of course the light it produces in the room and then of course it becomes a distraction from us sleeping when we know there's something in our room that will entertain us that will the lighten us up or awaken us it means that we're less likely to go to sleep also of course those times we're lying in bed and we've got our eyes closed and we're like oh i'm not going to sleep da, da, da. it becomes an easy option for us to wake up and just look at our phone or turn on our laptop. When we remove all those options from our room, it means that we actually take away any choice for us to distract ourselves from what is effectively boring our minds to sleep. And that takes me perfectly onto the next point, okay? Now, the whole point of going to sleep, the whole purpose is to switch our mind off, right? And actually process, allow the brain to process everything it's learned and absorbed throughout the day. Right? So if we wake up feeling fuzzy the next day, it's because our brain's still trying to process what happened yesterday. It can affect our memory. So of those of you, again, who feel like, I feel like there is definitely a connection between students and young people and saying that their memory's poor and stuff goes in in one ear out the other and the fact that they struggle to sleep, right? And sleep is about memory. Sleep is all about making sure that what you've gone through and what you process solidifies in your head. It actually genuinely goes through a bi biological process where it actually brings everything into question and consolidates everything overnight so if we're not giving it time to do that properly then the information is not stored properly and it's not consolidating things properly so stuff can feel fuzzy so we want to switch our mind off we want it to stop processing we want it to turn off and so the next thing that i suggest when it comes to sleeping patterns and this is something that i've done that actually has worked really well for me and i'll start with the headline of boring your mind completely and it really speaks to why they all they talked about this thing about counting sheep. Because if you think about it, you're literally counting sheep jumping over a fence. And people would say, well, why the hell would you do that? That's not going to work. Well, actually, that's the point, is that it's boring as hell. If you're in your mind just counting sheep jumping over a fence, eventually your mind will go, well, the way I see it is your mind is kind of like, well, this is dull. Nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. I'm going, I'm switching off. Clearly, this is all we're going to do now. So I'm switching off. I'm going out. See you later. And eventually it will turn off. Now, that may not work for everyone. Um, I have done counting my breath and I rarely got to 100 
until a couple of nights in a row I did and I was like, okay, I need to find a new technique. So here's a number of different techniques that I use to work to get to sleep that all worked and I cycle through them differently depending on what works and what doesn't. And I hold to it because I know that the moment I sit up or get up or get back on my phone, I'm going to be awake for at least another hour and that doesn't serve the purpose. But then also I'm, I'm, I'm bringing all of these techniques together. So for example, if I know I'm going to have to be up at a certain time, it doesn't matter whether I can or cannot sleep. It doesn't matter if I get up and put my phone up. I know that that alarm is going to go off at the same time. So I'm just like, I'm just going to deal with that because it's all about making sure I keep my sleep pattern. So there's another technique that I use, which doesn't uh, involve counting, which is actually, um, I was taught this one, was leaving your jaw slack and pressing your tongue up against your front two teeth, right? And you think, well, again, what's, what purpose does that serve? Well, again, the purpose is, is it switches your mind off. Your focus is brought down to this one point of just basically your, the lower half of your head, right? And all the focus is there. And your pressure, the idea of putting your tongue up against your front teeth is that it's something to do. So it's a single active thing for your brain to do while also leaving your jaw slack. And eventually what happens is the more you try to focus on making this happen, the more your brain is just going to get into that single focus mode and eventually switch off. So that's something else that really worked nicely for me. I hope you're still doing that drink when I drink thing. Another element that really worked for me, and this was one that my father taught me, which was he has a hobby that he does. And in order to do this hobby, he has to set up, right? He has to get set up and ready to do his hobby. And he did it so often that it became second nature, right? Like muscle memory type thing. And so he said to me, well, what I do is when I want to go to sleep, I will work through step by step that process of setting up to do my hobby. And I've never actually got to the point, he said, where I was doing the thing that I enjoyed, the hobby. I was not doing it because the setup process actually switched me off and I would go to sleep before I got to the hobby part. And I thought about that and I was like, okay, let me give that a go. So back in the day, of course, I, I worked in restaurants and it was the same process every day you would open a restaurant. And I've forgotten it, to be honest with you, but I know there were things like Marrying up the sauces, putting the sauces out, getting the outside furniture ready, getting the candles out, getting the ashtrays ready, doing the cutlery if that needed to be done, you know, taking stuff out the cold store and prep the stations and etc, etc, cut lemons and limes. And I would try going through that process to get the restaurant ready for the first customers to come in and eat. And I tried that a couple of times and I think it was because I didn't have a full routine like this is what I did first and this is what I did first and this is what I did first and it didn't really work because every morning there might be something different that would come up, right? So it wasn't always a process. So I was like, okay, that doesn't quite work, but I kind of understand the, the theory behind it. And then I realized, and this is where you can go into your own element of things. You can personalize this. There's a game that I love. Uh, it was Dark Souls 2 that I play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And actually I've got my gaming channels tagged to this. So if you want to watch that series, you can. Um, Dark Souls 2, I played that loads and I played it so much that I could actually memorize not just the games and the levels, but where each enemy was. I remembered the secret tunnels, I remembered the passageways, like little bits here and there. And so I thought, okay, I will play that. I'm going to play that game. And that's exactly what I did. I played the game. When I went to bed, I would literally load the game up in my head and I would walk through step by step every single part of the game. And it took me, I don't know how long, it took me what felt like a matter of weeks to reach the first boss. And that's, you know, that's maybe like 20, 30 minutes in. And uh, and then I continued on from there. And I think the, the I don't even know if I made it to the second boss now I think about it. I don't think I did. But it honestly, it reached a point where I, I would fall asleep very often before I got to the certain place, right? And what was even better was that the next day or the next night I'd go to bed and I'd remember the last thing I remembered before I went to sleep. It didn't matter the exact point where I went to sleep, but I'd go, oh, that's where I got to. Let me start from there. So it was almost like save points and I would continue on. And that worked so well with developing a pattern of going to sleep, you know, in under, you know, 45 minutes, half an hour. It would feel like 10 minutes, five minutes, I was out, done. And that really helped me. So if you can think of something you know really well, a hobby that you do, if you draw, maybe draw something in your head, if you write music, maybe play a song that you know really well over and over, anything like that. 
that just completely turns your mind off into single focus mode and bores it to death, <laughs> bores it to sleep, I should say, really, is what's effective. I found that really, really helpful. Definitely. Definitely. Um, other things that I did to help me get to sleep. Now, what were they? Ah, yes, the last one. This was great. Now, I learned this um, actually when I was on a, a cruise ship. And on cruise ships, obviously, there's waves, and so the boat sways very gently, mind. Sometimes not so gently, but quite gently for the most part. So when you get into bed, there's this real. I found this so relaxing, so, so relaxing, where as the waves, you know, as the waves flow back and forth or sway the boat, ship, whatever, um, when you're lying in bed, you get a sensation of the bed hugging you. So you feel like you were sinking into the bed, and then you'd have a moment where you felt like you were floating on the bed and then you'd be sinking into the bed and floating. Now, I'm not suggesting that's what you do, but what I recognized was really helpful was when I was in bed, you know those mornings you wake up and you just wish you could stay in bed, right? And it was like the most comfortable, wonderful, amazing place on the earth, and that was it. Your bed was like, that was the best thing ever. What I recognized is when I was sinking into the bed, it was like that sensation. I, I actually, I, I mentally sank into the bed and was like, this is exactly where I wanna be. There is nothing I need to worry about. Nothing is going on that needs to concern me because what can I do about it? What I want to put my focus on is how great it is to be in bed right now. And so when I go into bed, what I would imagine is that I was sinking. I guess it was like a meditation. Every time I breathed out, every time I exhaled, I would feel like I was getting heavier and sinking into the bed. And my duvet was almost you know, hugging me and the bed was hugging me and I pictured myself falling into this, you know, bottomless pit comfortably of a mattress, this, this foam and just sinking into it. And it just, it made me feel really, really nice, really nice. It was warm and cozy and lovely. And I, I even when, I'm, I think actually even after that, so when I moved into a new place, I didn't have a mattress straight away and I slept on the floor for about a month and I still did it then. I still did it then. I imagined the floor was just the most comfortable thing and I just, you know, sink into it and it still worked then. And that really helped me get to sleep. Now, all of these are really ha uh, handy and it really allowed me to find a great sleeping pattern and also get better quality sleep, really good quality sleep. Now, again, in terms of sleeping patterns, the final thing that I will say about it, which really, really just made a world of difference was caffeine and the amount that I drank. So I used to have a difficulty with um, certain substances and I would drink a lot of coffee in the day because I felt like the coffee would keep me alert. Now, not only was that true, but it also really did a lot of damage in regards to my resting. Some of you already know this because I taught you this, but some of you don't, or have, maybe you don't know this, but coffee and caffeine actually, caffeine I'll say, not coffee, Caffeine stays in your system for up to 12 hours, right? So if you think you drink energy drinks, Coke, um, coffee, of course, anything with caffeine in it, it will stay in your system for 12 hours. Imagine it does. It says up to 12 hours, but imagine it's 12 hours. So if you're drinking energy drinks at 3 p.m. to stay alert in a classroom or lesson or to do something, or if you're drinking energy drinks at 7 p.m. because you've got to stay up to do some gaming with your buddies, right? That caffeine could still be in your system 12 hours later, 3 a.m., 7 a.m., which doesn't surprise me when some of you young people and students out there are saying that you can't sleep until 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Some of you, right? Because I'm thinking, well, of course, because you drink energy drinks all day, caffeine all day, thinking, oh, I need to stay awake, I need to stay awake. When there was an example where this isn't the case, and I think it was a caffeine overload, one student Obviously, we're not allowed energy drinks in the classroom. And they, they came with a full, they just opened it. And I said, well, you're either going to have to throw that away or go outside and finish it, right? Which is quite a bit irresponsible, I know, but there you go, thinking they wouldn't. They drank the whole can in one sitting, came in, and they were asleep in 10 minutes. They passed out. Now, you could say, oh, well, uh, you know, caffeine helps me sleep and da, da, da. And well, they drank a load of caffeine and they fell asleep. But the thing is, that wouldn't have been good sleep because they had overloaded on caffeine, a stimulant. And what could possibly have happened is, yeah, the brain was so overloaded, it literally went, it just went, boop, I'm going, I'm done, see you later. 
and passed out. But that sleep wouldn't have been healthy. It wouldn't have been good. It wouldn't have been the proper, correct amount of sleep that would have been necessary. So certainly drinking energy drinks to go to sleep and have a good night's sleep is not the one at all. Um, so I, I would say really strongly limit and watch what caffeine is in as well. Keep an eye out for what caffeine is in because it's in a surprisingly large number of things. But watch how much caffeine you consume in a day. All of these things are going to make you feel tired in the short term. You'll feel more tired because what you're doing is you're switching your habit and pattern around completely, right? You're trying to develop a better sleeping pattern. And because your sleeping pattern currently isn't great, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video, then yes, you're, you're basically, your body's going to be out of whack. It's going to want to sleep when you're not meant to sleep. It's going to want to be awake when you're not meant to be awake, etc., etc. But stick to it. Stick to it and hold on to it. And I want to say do this for at least, at least two weeks to a month. Don't do it for three days and go, oh, it hasn't worked. Don't do it. Don't do it for one day and think, oh, this hasn't worked. Two weeks to a month. Keep going. Right? And now's a great time as well because, again, we don't have to go to college. We don't have to go anywhere. So it's a great time, actually, for us to start practicing this, this element of setting this pattern. What you'll also find, actually, is that if, when you wake up earlier in the day, your days feel a lot longer. And this is something that really, again, changed. Your days feel so much longer, which gives you more time to actually get done the things you need to get done. So you'll feel more productive because you'll have more time to do things, right? So those are any tips. If you have any more tips of your own, put them in the comment box below. If you have any more questions, put them in the comment box below. Otherwise, I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in another video. Take care, everyone. Later.